G'day, tonight I wanted to run through my thoughts on the DJI Mini 4 Pro. If you only have a few minutes, I'll put most of my thoughts at the front and then go into more detail and example shots uh, towards the uh, the back end of the video. So if you're looking to buy this drone, I would 100% recommend it. It's great for the sub 250 gram price range. The image quality is fabulous. The frame rate options are great and it handles the wind pretty good for its size. Obviously, if it's gusty wind or a high wind area, you will notice movement and you will get the strong wind warnings in this drone because of its size. But for the shots where you're up on those wider shots doesn't show up as much in the, in the image. When you're doing lower shots, when you're closer to a subject, you will notice the drone bouncing around a bit more. So if you're definitely gonna be on the coastline heaps or if you just live in an area where you there is lots of wind and high wind and gusty wind, it's probably not the drone for you. If you're upgrading from a drone you already have, the difference between the Mini 3 Pro and the Mini 4 Pro probably isn't enough to warrant buying the 4 instead of the three, unless you can definitely sell the three for a decent price. If you're already shooting, obviously, with a Mavic 3 series of drone, then stick with them. The quality of those is much better. Besides the image quality and frame rates, the total pro of this drone is its weight. The size of it is tiny. The weight means we can fly in more locations with less regulations. And because it's so small, I find it's just easier and quicker to be up flying and capturing what you need in a shorter amount of time. The carry bag's small, and I find I can literally have the carry bag on my shoulder, pull the drone out, pull the remote out, and launch out of my hand within two minutes, basically. And that time saving, getting the drone up and away so quickly, really helps with my style of work where most of the time we only have a very small amount of time to get the drone up in between interviews or different locations that we're traveling to. So this kind of drone just suits that so well. Now for my work, I mainly shoot at 4K 50 frames. Uh, I generally always try and have the ND on to stick to the hundredth shutter with that frame rate. Uh, and I've found it perfect. It's really usable footage. It mixes well with my Canon C70 and Canon R5C. I've just found it overall just a really great drone to be a part of my kit. With the recent firmware update, I had a quick play and looked at the Vision Assist, which has the four cameras that you can display while you're filming. So you can either have it as a small view in the left corner, or you can bring it to full size screen. I can't really see myself using this, but I'm sure it's handy if you're just wanting to make sure that you're not gonna run into anything if you're getting super close to it. So this is an example of the drone trying to hover in place and because of its size, the wind just peppers it. So you'll kind of see that the drone's just getting blown around a bit. I definitely found that this happened less in my bigger drone being the Mavic 2. And when I've flown the Mavic 3 Pro, it definitely handles this kind of idle state a lot better than the Mini does. But yeah, it's a tiny drone, so it makes sense. Again, this is uh, flying close to an object, uh, trying to fly straight, but the wind just kept blowing me off line. In this example, the autofocus did some searching mid shot, which would yeah, pretty much make that shot unusable if you really needed that moment. So it obviously tried to pick the tree or the water or something changed. So that definitely would make me want to lock off focus in the future. Most of the time I shoot with the ND64 on during daytime shooting. If I'm doing dusk or dawn, then yeah, you pretty much don't need that. You could jump down to the 16 or just have nothing. Uh, the reason I do that is to try and keep my shutter speed around the 100th mark, uh, just to keep that footage just a bit more buttery in the movement, uh, so it's not so jolty and jittery. I find when you let the shutter speed go up too high if you're not shutting out the light with an ND. So one of the main reasons I got the 4 is I wanted to have a backup drone for my 3, and obviously so I'll shoot with the 4 as my main drone now and have the 3 as the backup. I definitely have loved it so far. It took ages for the NDs to turn up, but now that I can actually shoot properly and keep the shutter where I want it, I've really enjoyed it. The higher frame rates, I've only had one chance to kind of play with the 200 frames per second in HD, and um, it looked cool, um, but you can definitely you know, see that loss of quality in the HD. Another big plus to getting the four whilst already having the three was the batteries are usable in both models. Technically the Mini 3 
batteries will make your drone over 250 grams but if you're not shooting in a situation where that's a problem then that's all good the downside was that i had to buy separate filters because the obviously the camera is a different size on the front now the biggest downside is definitely the wind it gets peppered it gets moved the high wind notice comes up all the time so when i was flying my mavic 2 regularly it was definitely affected by the wind heaps less than the minis so that's something to consider if you do live in a high wind area and or if you're trying to do static shots or do long exposure photos that's definitely uh, a downside with the smaller size so just keep that in mind but it's obviously a sacrifice for the size is that ability to withstand the wind so it's a bit of a no-brainer now the transmission distance between the minis and my mavic 2 pro is definitely shorter i feel there's more interference uh, and the drone signal can be lost between trees and things if the drone's lower than your position or a building or something not giving you the, the straightest of lines so that's another factor if you plan to do a lot of shots where you, you might have a lot of interference around you just keep that in mind as well right so that's enough from me now the rest of the video is just the same footage but in slow-mo so the 50 frames slowed down to 25 don't forget to subscribe and like the video and leave us a comment if you have any questions or any thoughts on uh, what i've done hope this helps someone out there and uh, hope you have a great time cheers
Now, would I recommend this drone? Absolutely. It's fantastic for its size and price. The frame rate options and the image quality is definitely worth it and definitely usable in a professional setting. Obviously, if you're doing really complex uh, shots at different times of the day that are more challenging light-wise for image quality and or if you're going to do heavy grading, then yes, probably you need to stick to the Mavic 3 series or above. But for the price point and its weight, it is definitely worth its weight in gold. And I did the pun.